for my street screen capture testing one two okay, that's looking good testing one two one two All right, I think we better get moving soon because we're running out of time today. So I want to go over and uh, this new, I want to go over this new topic. So we're going to switch gears. We're going to totally change direction 180 degrees. And what are we going to change to? We're going to change to not distributive, but integrative bargaining so let's everybody go through the door for integrative bargaining so join me in part number six come on in Okay, recording, testing, recording on QuickTime Recorder, and testing, recorder on Windows Machine. While we're waiting for my students to come in, this is Warden testing, recording. All right, then I think we're going to need to move forward here because I'm um, really worried we're running out of time. Only about. 20 minutes of last time left. So this is the vocab again. I'm not going to do a killer uh, detailed look at the vocab. Of course, uh, you should have done that in my lecture where I covered it in detail. But what I really want to pick up on here is these words are quite different than the list we had before, which was the list of the uh, distributive bargaining words where we talked a lot about things like putting it off refusing trying to avoid giving up too much in this case we're doing just the opposite we're using words that help us to understand the other side to explain ourselves to the other side to help us quickly find out more information rather than avoiding giving more information that's very very different so in this case, we have some very positive words such as appreciate and attractive, uh, competitiveness, you want to talk about your features, you want to talk about overcoming problems, you want to talk about making things satisfactory, right? And you want to talk about sweetening the deal. I love that word, sweetening the deal. We often use that. Let me sweeten this deal, right? I guess it's because I have a sweet tooth. I like to eat sweet things. I like the word sweeten. Uh, that's a really good word in this kind of situation. Um, quite opposite or quite different in our distributive bargaining where we have a word, for example, let me look back there really quickly, a word like uh, exploit, right? Or a word like uh, hold out. Or a word like authorize. I need to authorize this before I can give it to you. I need to go get authorization. I don't have authorization. Here we're not talking about that. Here we're saying things like, let me sweeten the deal for you. Let me give you something that will make the deal better for you. 
All right, I think that's all we need to do on the vocab. It's not a super long list anyway. So what we'd like to do is go into the introduction. So everybody follow me. Come on, everybody, follow me. Come on to room number two. And there's Andrea. Hello, Andrea. Andrea and Sierra. Okay, come on through the door. Just go ahead, move forward, go through the door. Everybody. Very good. chapter is not too hard is because I think the ideas in this chapter are ideas that everybody likes, admires, thinks about often, kind of um, easy to accept. That's why I spent a lot of time on the distributive bargaining because I think the distributive bargaining is a much more difficult concept to get used to. The integrative bargaining, the main idea is win-win. I think this is something we learn about from, you know, our business classes. We learn about a lot. It's something that makes us feel a little bit more comfortable. However, I just want to emphasize that integrative bargaining does not mean you just give up half and the other side gives up half. That's not what we're talking about. In fact, what we're talking about is quite different than give up half and the other side gives up half. And the reason for that is, if you think about it quite simply, if you give up half and the other side gives up half, you end up with getting half of what you wanted, and they get half of what they wanted. In other words, nobody gets what they wanted. And um, that doesn't quite seem like the maximal solution. So, in searching for a situation where everybody really gets what they want, I want to avoid the idea of half and half, or what we usually talk about as compromise. And so the question is very simple. How can you have a win-win situation if you don't do it through compromise? And the way we do it is we increase the size of the pie. We expand the pie. Now, one way we can expand the pie is, let me give you a pie example. This chapter is full of food examples. In fact, these last two chapters are all food examples. I realized that when I was recording my lecture the other day on the video. I was like, whoa, there's a lot of food in here. I guess I was hungry. The pie example is a good one because let me just explain it in a way that's not explained in our book. The pie example could be maybe you have a I know pie is not very popular in Taiwan. Pie is not a very Chinese food. I guess we could say something like uh, dan ta, right? It's similar. It has a crust and it has a filling. Okay, so if you have a pie and inside you have, like, let's say, cherry, a cherry pie. It's getting near lunch. I'm really making myself hungry now. So we have a cherry pie. 
Now, some people don't like the filling of the pie so much. You know, it's, I'll give you an example. I know people in Taiwan who don't like the filling that much because it's very sweet. You know, it has the cherries. Cherries are sweet. And then if you make a cherry pie, the, you add a lot more sugar. So it ends up that the filling can become very, very sweet. So some people don't like that. It's too sweet for them. On the other hand, some people don't like the crust. That's the outside of the pie. The outside of the pie, maybe they think is too bland or too hard or it has too much uh, shortening in it or something like this. So rather than just cutting the pie in half, I get half, you get half, another solution would be to ask, what do you like? Do you like the filling or do you like the crust? And if you like the crust, I can give you the crust because I like the filling and I can have the filling. So this is this idea of changing the situation so that both sides get what they want. Or if you want to have both the crust and the filling, and I like the crust and the filling too, is there a way we can expand the pie? Can we make the pie bigger so that we all get what we want? Can we make it so that we get enough of what we want? And so that's today's, or this chapter here, this part. How do we do that? The key point to do that is understanding. How do you get understanding? By sharing information. So sharing information is quite contrary to what we've been doing so far in this class. So far we've been hiding information, not sharing information, right? Hiding information, not sharing it. Or when we share it, we're actually trying to fool the other side into believing something that's not true, mislead them. So how can we share information? Well, it, it seems after all I've talked about, after all I've emphasized, be careful, you have to have win-lose. After all of that, now I'm telling you to share information. Well, I want to give you one caveat or one thing to be careful about. Sharing information is very helpful. Sharing information can help you have a win-win situation. However, it only works if the other side is also working towards win-win. If you're trying to win-win, you share your information, but the other side is actually win-lose. They're going to take your information. They're going to lie to you and tell you something about their information, which is not true. You're going to tell them your true resistance point. They're going to tell you their false resistance point. And you're going to end up losing and they're going to end up winning. Now, of course, it depends on what was your goal package. What did you want? Did you get what you wanted? That's important, of course. But I think it's key here to realize win-win is great, but it is actually very rare. So when my students play the RPG, it's always kind of sad to see there's a few groups who began very hopeful, very happy that they were going to be friends and they were going to win-win and they talked to their friends and they shared information and then when the RPG score was added up, what happened? They were crushed, totally beaten by the other groups, especially the group that took advantage of them by saying, yeah, yeah, we want to win-win too. We want to share our information with you. In reality, they were not sharing their true information. Okay, so expanding the pie means changing the situation so that you get what you want and I get what I want. How do we do it? By understanding. How do we understand? Through information. How do we get the information? We share it. Okay. All right, so that's the main point of expanding the pie. So let's go on to room number three, which is the dialogue. So quickly follow me, everybody.
Alright everybody, come on over to me. All right, we're getting very close on time, so I want to just quickly cover this before we run out of our time. All right, what we're looking here in this dialogue is uh, two dialogues, but I don't think I need to cover them in too much detail. Again, we're doing the food thing with the family example, right? Remember previously in the distributive negotiation, what did we have? We had a situation where we had one piece of pizza and two people were hungry. So what did we do to solve that problem? Well, there was no good solution, right? We had to think about um, win-lose. Somebody has to win, somebody has to lose. That's simple. In this case, what are we looking at? We're looking at a hot dog situation. And a hot dog is just like the pie example I just gave you. We can say, what do you want? What do you need? In this case, you don't want to eat the hot dog. Explain to me why. Tell me more. Uh, what's, what is it you're thinking of? Why, why do you not like this deal? What's wrong with this? And by asking these questions, we slowly understand what is it that this person really needs. And by understanding what they need, maybe we can say, hey, no problem. I can give that to you easily. I can give you what you want while I still get what I want. And that's the idea of integrative bargaining. Again, it's about being honest. It's about sharing information. It's about helping the other side understand what you want. Also, what your limits are, what your needs are, what your, um, well, basically sharing all your information. It's a bit scary, actually. And again, you've got to be careful because if you do it, and the other side is not really being honest, that's going to be a problem. Professor, okay, someone can't hear me. Yes. Okay, so let me test this here. Is this only one person who can't hear me or more than once? That's Andrea. Andrea. Cannot hear me. Can anybody else hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, well, Andrea, let me help Andrea here for a second. Andrea, maybe try inside tools, audio, reconnect, soft phone. Maybe try that. Uh, can you talk? Andrea. Oops, spelled her name wrong. So while Andrea is uh, trying to get her situation fixed there, so in this case we have the hot dog example. Now it's a silly little example. I know it's silly, but it really has a strong point, and that is if we didn't ask, if we didn't say why don't you want a hot dog, so the person just said I don't want a hot, I don't want it, I don't like it. And, and you don't understand anything more. And if you don't understand anything more, then you're not going to be able to have an integrative bargaining. So, Andrea, I can hear you, Andrea. Your audio is working. And yes. Yes. Can, can hear you. Andrea. Okay. Um, reconnect. You can try to reconnect soft phone or log in again. 
Sometimes the audio goes out and you have to reconnect soft phone through the tools menu or log out and come back in help sometimes. Okay, so I think we were talking about this uh, integrative hot dog example, right? Again, a yeah, silly example, not a big deal, but I really think it makes the point. If Larry and Jane, I think we've often seen this, maybe you can see this in your parents or your grandparents or even your friends. Someone says, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't like it. And then the other person says, oh, I can't stand it, you don't like it. You know, you always say you don't like something. And by doing this, both sides are not finding out what the other side wants or what the other side needs because both sides are thinking I'm going to lose something this negotiation is distributive if I give you something I'm going to lose something you want something from me and you want something from me because I'm going to lose something you're going to gain something however in this kind of situation we ask questions by understanding what someone wants we can say, hey, maybe it's easy for me to give it to you. And in this exact case, what did we find out? We found out that Jane's not against hot dogs. She's just against having bread because of her diet. And because of her diet, she can't have the bread. And that's, well, okay, no problem. I'll just give you the bread and I'll eat the inside the hot dog. So no trouble there. That was easy. I win, you win. Did I give up half? No, I didn't give up half. I'm fine with what I got because my goal was to eat something for lunch. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, you got what you wanted. You got to have eat something for lunch because you're hungry and you did not break your diet. So you got what you want 100%. I got what I want 100%. That is a perfect example of a integrative negotiation. That's exactly how it should work. But you have to think outside the box. You have to trust the other side. You have to share your information and you have to ask questions. I wanted to show you this one more example before we go. I know we're out of time. Just give me one more minute. And what I want to show you is up here in this slide here with Larry and Rose. And the reason I like this example is if you look at it cl closely at the very beginning, uh, Larry's applying for a job, right? And what's he want? He wants a better salary, a better beginning salary. I think we can all understand this situation. He wants a better salary. Okay, that's very common. But Rose is in the position she cannot give it to him. She cannot. This is the company's rule. There's nothing more to give. She can't do it. So what's the solution? Well, there would seem to be no good solution. Somebody's going to lose and somebody's going to win, right? But by asking questions, by understanding more, what do we end up getting? We get a very different outcome. We get a situation where Rose can tell Larry, oh, well, you're interested in more money. Why? Well, because you think you have more value. Okay, tell me why. What is this value? Oh, I'm getting an MBA. Oh, you're getting an MBA. Okay. And you're going to the local school. Okay. And you're paying money for the tuition. Okay. Did you know our company helps with tuition? Did you know that after you get your degree, you can get a raise? Did you know this? Right? We, and you get a discount too. So all of these things add up to make your salary not the key one point. How do we know that? Because we talked about it. Because we asked questions about it. So this is how integrative bargaining moves forward. It moves forward by talking about it, asking questions, sharing information. This is not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to know what questions to ask. It also takes time and it's a little bit harder than just saying, I give you nothing. I give nothing. I'm already losing money, right? That's, being super, super tough is actually the easiest strategy to execute, but it's the hardest one to get to an end. Integrative is a little bit hard at the beginning because it's complicated. You need to understand the other side. You need to talk. You need to ask the right questions and hopefully get answers that you can do something with, you can act on. Okay, so that's basically the point of this chapter, and I think we're out of time for today, so I can't really go into our lunchtime, and talking all about foods made me a little bit hungry. I'd like to have a cherry pie, but I'm not going to be able to get one. So, are there any questions? If you have a question, please press uh, to talk now, and just feel free to ask or raise your hand. You can use your avatar to raise your hand like this. 
I'll always raise my hand up like that. Let's say, Professor Warden, I've got a question. My question is, why do you always talk about food? Okay, there's no questions then. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap up the class for today. Thank you for your cooperation. As always, it's very complicated, very interesting once we get things working. My slowdown here is I'm trying to record and teach at the same time. But it's working today, working not too bad. And if you have any problems, I'm going to hang out here for a little bit. You can ask me or talk to me. And if you don't have any questions, then you're free to go. So all I will say to you is uh, ciao. Goodbye. I didn't realize when your avatar waves, he also gives a big smile. It's pretty funny. Look at my smile. <laughs>